Amelia Earhart, paver of ways for women in aviation, most famous woman in aviation history, and a woman after a record and equality. Amelia Earhart was born in Edgeson, Kansas on July 24th of 1897. Her mother, Amelia Otis Earhart, was from a well-off family and was the main reason for her family staying afloat. Because of her father, Samuel Staten Earhart, who was a railroad lawyer who was moving his family frequently and also suffered from alcoholism. Amelia also had a sister by the name of Grace Muriel Earhart. Pictured here is their childhood home in which Amelia was raised in for a period of time. Amelia's education was only secondary compared to her dreams. Due to moving frequently, she went to six different high schools, but finally graduated in Chicago of 1916. After graduation, she attended a school in Pennsylvania, but that was short-lived. But soon, Amelia went to visit her sister in Toronto, Canada, and found a different love. She would like to be a nurse's aide and to attend Columbia University in New York, in which she would help wounded soldiers for the Red Cross. In 1920, Amelia's parents convinced her to move to California and to live with them. Little did they know, they were introducing her to the dream she was always waiting for, aviation. Her father took her to a show in the Christmas of 1920, and this was an aviation show. Here is an example here in this video. Now here you see a woman climbing out of the airplane, repairing a tire for landing. This kind of repair was very common, but also they would use this type of skill in order to perform aerial tricks on airplanes, which was exciting to Amelia. So much so that she fell in love with the idea of being in a plane. Her father then took her on a first plane ride a few days later with a pilot named Frank Hawks. Amelia fell in love so much that in her own words, she said, by the time I had to go two or 300 feet off the ground, I knew I had to fly. Amelia Earhart. Amelia's love for flying was like a burning flame. It took her less than two weeks to start her flying lessons, but she did not want any instructor. She wanted a female instructor. Amelia was determined and convinced Nita Snooks to teach her how to fly. On January 3rd of 1921, Amelia Earhart started her first flight lesson. Now, this did not come, out, come without cost. Amelia had to pay a dollar a minute for airtime. By October of 1922, she had broken an altitude record, but did not receive her license until 1923. Amelia broke the record in her first plane that she bought within six months of starting to learn how to fly. She had purchased this plane for $2,000. And this was the plane that took her to her record of altitude. Not only that, but this airplane was a bright yellow. It reminded her of a Camaro. This type of plane here is a Kinder Airster biplane, but she 
progressed from there. Amelia's career as a pilot took off. Of course, within the first year, she had broke the record of altitude in 1922. Short after, she was invited, invited to be the first woman to fly across the Atlantic in 1928. The pilot was Wilmer Stoltz and co-pilot was Lewis Gordon. She was also accompanied by a publisher slash publicist, George Putnam. This plane was called the Friendship and this flight led to the rise of Amelia Earhart in the aviation world and becoming one of the most famous women in aviation today. Amelia and George, after meeting on the friendship, bonded over preparation for the flight and even the flight itself. One would say that they fell in love Soon after, they were married February 7th of 1931. But Amelia didn't stop there, nor did she end her career due to marriage. In the time that Amelia was alive, she broke many records. Some of these are the few. Of course, we've heard about her altitude record she was the first woman to across the Atlantic. She set speed records for women, and not only that, she set speed records for all of aviation, male and female. She set the, alt uh, the auto gyro altitude record. Man, she flew high. She was the first woman to fly coast to coast alone, and was soon to be, or could have been, the first woman to fly around the world. She accomplished many other things other than just aviation. She published her first book. She founded the 99s, which is an aviation group of female flight, flight pilots. She also even started her own practical clothing line for women, for the working kind. To show women and men that we were equal was her goal even in a predominantly male environment. Amelia's adventures would soon come to an end. Amelia Earhart took off for the last time on June 1st, 1937. In this video here, we're going to see her fly for the last time. As you can see, they're prepping to be on the plane. Back then, all the videos were in black and white and had no sound. It's hard to believe that that was the last time we see Amelia Earhart leave. What a proud moment leading to a sad one. Amelia Earhart was accompanied by her navigator, Fred, Fred Noonan, and they were in a twin engine Lockheed Electra when they left that day. About a month passed by, but on July 2nd of 1937, the world received her last correspondence. We are running north and south, Amelia Earhart. Soon after that, we realized that we had lost one of the most influential women of our time in aviation. Though she may have disappeared, she will never be forgotten. <laughs>